Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and I wanted to show you how to quickly edit with Final Cut Pro 10. I've been using it since it first came out, and before that I was using Final Cut Pro 6 and Final Cut Pro 7 a little bit, a little bit of Premiere, but I started using iMovie, and if you're coming from iMovie or anything else, Either way, Final Cut Pro is really easy to learn, and I thought I'd show you the very easy steps to just get moving quickly. So we'll go ahead and open this up. I've edited total probably a thousand projects within this version of Final Cut Pro 10, and currently I have my media inserted ready to go, so I have an SD card inserted into my Mac, or into a card reader rather. You can use an iPhone or whatever you have, and what you wanna do is click this import button right here. Now, we'll go over what the rest of this is in a moment, but let's Let's import this first. So we'll, we'll click this arrow. And on the left, this is my memory card, my SD card. And then I have the other attached devices and my computer itself. So here's some footage. Now it doesn't really matter what this footage is, is recorded in. We just select it. We can highlight over it. And we have a couple different options on how to show this. We can show photos or all clips. I like it in this particular format. You can throw it into this format also if that works for you but I like it in this format just because I always have the newest at the top. So we'll click on this. This is the Xbox One S footage I recorded and did a video on for the unboxing. In the upper right, we can either add it to an existing event, but since if you're new at this, you'll wanna create a new one. So we'll say Xbox One test footage. Since this is a test video, we can just leave it pretty much set as default. Uh, I separate the mono, I separate mono and group stereo audio because the mic I use that like I'm recording right now records in mono uh, and it's just a separate mic that I'm using to record video with. So I'm going to hit import selected and you'll see it imports over here. So what we need to know about the upper left is it's our library with our files and our projects all in one place. So you can see right here, here's the Xbox One test footage. If I click the down arrow here, not really anything going on because I haven't created a project yet. The other thing I need to import, like I said, I created separate audio footage. Let me click the down arrow again. I create it with Piezo, Xbox One unboxing, same thing. It defaults to where I last had it. I'm gonna hit import. So now we have our video footage here and we have our audio footage in the same place. This is how I set everything up. And we can talk more about the different advanced features and scratch disks and things like that in a different video. I just wanna get you going quickly in this video. So what we have here again is our library. We have our files for our projects. Let's create a new project. So we're gonna to go to file, new, and project or command N. So we'll hit project, we'll just call it Xbox One test video. Now, the nice thing about this is you can either customize it or you can just set it based on the first video clip. So whether you recorded this in 4K 30p or 30 frames per second or 1080p 60 frames per second, it doesn't matter. It will create the whole video based on that first clip that you drag into the timeline. And this down here is the timeline. So whatever you drag into it first, it will automatically make everything else that same format. Down here, you can just leave it as default. It's pretty much the same thing anyway as I have custom, and we'll go ahead and hit OK. So you'll see it created a project, and it's left the timeline blank. This is where we're going to do all our editing. So our effects are down here, and our properties or things to inspect or parameters are in the upper right. Before I do that, let's make this window full screen. And now we have everything nice and full screen. Now. Before I showed you that I don't just have my footage, which I can just qu quickly drag and drop in here, or I can use one of these buttons, but let's first sync the audio to my recorded microphone audio. It's pretty simple to do, so we're going to highlight here, hold down Command, and click, so that we can highlight more than one thing at a time. Then we're going to Option click or Right click, depending on what you're using. I'm actually using a Magic Mouse. I know a lot of people hate that, but if you're using a Magic Trackpad or a Magic Mouse, they're very similar that way. We're just gonna click Synchronize Clips. We'll name it whatever we want. I'll just hit OK, like I normally do. It just synchronized the audio that quickly. So now here's my synchronized clip. I could have renamed it if I wanted to, but what I need to do is right click on it or command or option click, hit open in timeline. And down here, you'll see it's synced it. It's perfectly synced it. This is the footage I recorded on the microphone. This is the one attached to the video. So I can either right click and detach this audio, or I can just drop this audio down 
to zero by clicking the bar and dragging. I could have changed the actual auto audio parameters here in the upper right under audio and dropped the volume down to zero here as well. Either way, it's the exact same thing. So now I'm going to scroll up and either double click on Xbox One test video, my project, or I'm going to click the back arrow. Back will bring you to whatever you were at last. Same with forward. It works really simply. So now that I've got my synced clip, I've dropped the audio from the main clip and have it all synced, I'm just going to drag it down into here. Now I know if you've ever watched Larry Jordan's training, who I actually learned from over many, many hours of training, uh, this is not a way he prefers to do it. He would have you click these arrows down and it's just something I used to use these in Final Cut Pro 6 and 7. I prefer to just drag and drop it in this version. Here's two things I think you should learn. It's really simple. All I use is the letter A and the letter B. A for arrow, B for blade. Now you can get the same thing by clicking here, select or blade. That's how I actually cut everything within Final Cut. It's very fast and I, I can zip right along. Now if you can't see this and it's too small, we can zoom in and out of the actual time this way. We can zoom in and out of the actual size of the the clips here, and we can change all of the different appearances here. So customize it however you'd like. Whatever's working for you, use that. So I'll just leave it big for the sake of this video so you can see it easily. I normally edit it how it was before, smaller. So obviously here we have our clip, we have our audio, we can turn the audio up and down, and we can throw on effects and everything. We'll talk about that in another video. So what I need to do is first get rid of this beginning where I'm talking, and I'm going to hit B for blade and just click. Hit A for arrow, highlight, hit delete, and it deletes. If I wanna go back, I can hit Command Z. That's just for undo or redo delete. Either way, you can do it however you'd like. It's very customizable, very simple. You can change key assignments even if you want to in the properties, but that's way more advanced and we'll talk about that in another video. So this is how I actually edit. So I've just cut that piece off. I'm gonna hit space. Maybe I like the clip, maybe I don't. Hit space and stop. I can go one frame at a time by using the arrow key forward and back, left and right, forward and back. And say I want to cut right up here. Again, blade, A, delete. I got rid of that clip. We'll bring it back. Again, B for blade. We'll cut this part out of it. Now, if we want to put a quick transition between the two, we've got a couple different ways we can do that. We can highlight either side of this, and we can also adjust our clip timing here as well, how much of that clip we want just by dragging. We can do that on either side. It works well. But if we want to throw a transition between these two, here are our transitions, and we have cross dissolve and all these different ones. I often use color panels, color planes, and cross dissolve. They're all built in and I use those often. Now the default one is a cross dissolve. And one way you can do that is you can just drag and drop it where you want the transition. You can even resize the transition. We'll zoom in a little bit. You can actually grab the transition and make it faster or slower. Or to more quickly add the same transition, since it's set as the default transition, Command T will do the exact same thing. Highlight one side, Command T. So as you go through your footage, you're adding transitions, you hit space, this will play. You'll see it transition there. And this orange little dot or line here is just footage that hasn't been rendered. Basically footage that of this transition that hasn't fully been rendered, it will play, but it's importing at the same time you're actually working on this. And to show what I'm showing right here, you can just see the progress right here. If I click on it, you can see it more detailed. Same with the audio here. I can click on it and remove it, click to bring it back. By default, it's not there, so you may wanna click on it and bring it there. And if you don't want all of this to the right, click the little X. When you need a transition, click transitions, it pops back in. So if you mouse over any of these, you'll be able to see it. If you wanna adjust the parameters more finely, you can do it right here, video and audio. It's pretty simple and really a very quick way to edit. So let me zoom out a little bit, actually zoom in a little bit, and say we wanna finish this up, we're done with it, we'll throw on a transition here. We want to 
just okay. export this however we want. If we're done with the clips and we want to be done and export them to YouTube or whatever we want to do, now you need to go to File, and then we can either send it to Compressor or we can share it. Sharing it into YouTube is a really quick and easy way to do that. I actually like to save it to my device first so I have a backup of the file and then upload it. And I do that actually by using master file. I find it to be quicker than sending it to compressor. So if I click on master file and then you need to change some settings, I go to settings. I have it set for web hosting, H.264 and then the particular size, in this case it's 4K, 3840 by 2160, but I could shrink it if I wanted to. If it's 60 frames per second, it'll just say 1080, 1920 by 1080. It won't show you that it's 60 until it's done, and that's pretty much it. This just means it will open with QuickTime Player when the export finishes. So then all you need to do is hit Next, and pick where you wanna save it. You wanna save it to your desktop, save it to your desktop, hit Save, and it will begin to export. And once it begins to export, it will continue and you'll see it actually right here. It will show you transcoding and analysis and exporting and sharing all those different things. It will show you and once it's completed, it will pop up and let you know it's done. Final Cut Pro is very advanced and simple to get started when you wanna get moving quickly. But it's got a lot of those features that Premiere has, they're just not up front and you don't have all these menus to dig through. So basically if you wanna change the coloring, you just go to this little icon here, go to color, drag and drop color correction on. Now we can go to color correction under video and correct the color. This is a little bit more advanced and we'll talk about that in a different video, but all of the things are here. We can add plugins. I've purchased plugins from Motion VFX for callouts and things for lower thirds, all sorts of really nice plugins that they have. And there's a lot of people making those plugins. It's really really a nice app and it is still used in Hollywood and different movie studios, things like that, just like Premiere is and just like Avid is. So hopefully this will help you get started and moving in editing content within Final Cut Pro. It's a $300 application, but it's only a one-time fee and I haven't had to pay for it again since. With Premiere, you have to pay over and over every month or yearly. And with Avid, it's a very expensive program. There are some others out there like iMovie that are less expensive or free, but if you want the more advanced features, you'll need something like this. If you wanna see any other specific tutorials on Final Cut Pro, let me know in the comments below. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe and like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron, I'll see you next time.